guys, it's me, Miss Norris, and today I'd like to share a fun read aloud with you. I'd like to read the story Chester's Way. Chester's Way was written in 1988 by Kevin Hanks, and it's a story about friendship, and I hope you really enjoy it. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Chester's Way. Chester had his own way of doing things. Hello, my name is Chester. I like croquet and peanut butter and making my bed. Are any of you like Chester? You like croquet and peanut butter and making your bed? I like at least a couple of those things. He always cut his sandwiches diagonally. He always got out of bed on the same side. And he never left the house without double knotting his shoes. Chester always had the same thing for breakfast, toast with jam and peanut butter, and he always carried a miniature aid first miniature first aid kit in his back pocket, just in case. You definitely have a mind of your own, said Chester's mother. That's one way to put it, said Chester's dad. So he has his own way of doing things, and he does the same things every day. Chester's best friend, Wilson, was exactly the same way. That's why they were best friends. Chester wouldn't play baseball unless Wilson played, and they never swung at the first pitch. Wilson wouldn't ride his bike unless Chester wanted to, and they always used hand signals. If Chester was hungry, Wilson was too, but they rarely ate between meals. Some days I can't tell those two apart, said Wilson's mother. Me either, said Wilson's father. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. So they were pretty good buddies. They would only play if the other one could play, and they took turns thinking about what each other wanted to do. They loved to go on picnics. Once, when Wilson accidentally swallowed a watermelon seed and cried because he was afraid a watermelon plant would grow inside him, Chester swallowed one too. Don't worry, said Chester. Now if you grow a watermelon plant, I'll grow one too. Chester duplicated his Christmas list every year and gave a copy to Wilson because they always wanted the same things anyway. For Halloween, they always dressed as things that went together. Salt and pepper, two mittens on a string, Eggs and ham? They really are two peas in a pod, said Chester's mother. Looks like it, said Chester's father. That's because they're dressed up like two peas. Can you see them? So they're very good friends. In spring, Chester and Wilson shared the same umbrella. In winter, they never threw snowballs at each other. In the fall, they raked leaves together. And in the summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Wow, every season of the year, they are nice to each other. That's what good friends do. They're nice to you no matter, no matter what season it is. Chester and Wilson, Wilson and Chester... That's the way it was. And then, dun, 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 Lily moved into the neighborhood. Lily had her own way of doing things. I'm Lily. I am the queen. I like everything. So you can see Lily is new to the neighborhood, and she has a different way of doing things than Chester and Wilson. Do you think that they might be able to make friends with Lily? Or do you think she's maybe too different? Do you think different could be good? We'll see. She wore band-aids all over her arms and legs. 
to look brave. She talked backwards to herself sometimes so no one would know what she was saying. And she never left the house without one of her nifty disguises. So you can see down here she's dressed up like a, a little mouse clown. Lily waved at all the cars that passed by, even if she didn't know who was in them. And she always carried a loaded squirt gun in her back pocket, just in case. She definitely has a mind of her own, said Chester. That's one way to put it, said Wilson. So Lily does things a little bit differently. While Chester and Wilson never leave the house without their first aid kit, she never leaves the house without a squirt gun in her pocket. It's a little different. When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said they were busy. When she called them up on the phone, they disguised their voices and said they weren't home. If Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson crossed to the other side and hid. She's something else, said Chester. Looks like it, said Wilson. Are these fellas being very nice to someone new to their neighborhood? If you were new someplace, would you want someone to hide from you and say that, that you weren't home? One day, while Chester and Wilson were practicing their hand signals, some older boys rode by, popping wheelies. They circled Chester and Wilson and yelled personal remarks. So some bigger boys came in there, driving circles around them and saying mean words to them. Chester and Wilson didn't know what to do. Just when they were both about to give up hope, a fierce-looking cat with horrible fangs jumped out of the bushes and frightened the older boys away. Hmm, do you know anyone that dresses up in nifty disguises and carries a squirt gun, just in case? Hmm. Are you who I think you are? Chester asked the cat. Of course, replied the cat. The cat replied. Thank you, Lily, said Chester. You're welcome, Chester, said Lily. Thank you, Lily, said Wilson. You're welcome, Wilson, said Lily. I'm glad you were wearing a disguise, said Chester. And I'm glad you had your squirt gun, said Wilson. I always do, said Lily, just in case. So the boys were nice to her when she was nice to them. Do you think maybe they're going to try and let her be a friend now? It would be a nice thing to do. Afterward, Chester invited Lily over for lunch. You have a muscle mouse cup, said Lily. Of course, said Chester. I do too, said Lily. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson cut their sandwiches diagonally. Lily asked Chester's mother if she had, a, if she had cookie cutters, and she made stars and flowers and bells. That's neat, said Chester. Whoa, said Wilson. That night, Lily invited Chester and Wilson to sleep over. You have a nightlight, said Chester. Of course, said Lily. I do too, said Chester. Same here, said Wilson. Chester and Wilson wanted toast with jam and peanut butter for breakfast the next morning. Boring, said Lily. Try this instead. This is good, said Chester. Wow, said Wilson. So she showed the boys how to make their, their toast into a little face, a little person with adding some fruit and stuff. Wilson and Chester both seemed pretty impressed. After that, 
When Lily asked Chester and Wilson to play, they said yes. When she called them up on the phone, they had pleasant conversations. And if Lily was walking on one side of the street, Chester and Wilson ran to catch up with, waved and ran to catch up with her. Chester and Wilson taught Lily hand signals, and she taught them how to pop wheelies. Lily taught Chester and Wilson how to talk backwards, and they taught her how to double knot her shoes. So now they're starting to be buddies. They're doing fun stuff together. They're teaching each other things. That's what friends do. Some days I can't tell those three apart, said Lily's mother. Me either, said Lily's father. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. For Halloween, they dressed as the three blind mice. For Christmas, Lily gave Chester and Wilson nifty disguises. And they gave her a box of multicolored shoelaces, extra long for double knotting. They loved to go on picnics. When Chester and Wilson told Lily about how they had each swallowed a watermelon seed once, Lily swallowed three of them. I'll grow a watermelon plant for each of us, she said. Wow, they're really becoming super buds. They dressed up together. They have Christmas presents with each other. And they even grow watermelon plants inside themselves for each other. In the spring, Chester and Wilson and Lily shared the same umbrella. In the winter, they, they never threw snowballs at each other. In the fall, they raked leaves together. And in the summer, they reminded each other to wear sunscreen so they wouldn't burn. Chester and Wilson and Lily, Lily and Wilson and Chester. That's the way it was. And then, dun, 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 Victor moved into the neighborhood. Ooh, do you think that they're going to, because they found out that Lily was so much fun, do you think they'll all give Victor a chance? He looks a little fun to me. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you really enjoyed the story Chester's Way. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button down here at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.